This juvenile G of Fagus is so stubby it's cute, but when it gets larger, it's just plain beautiful. More about the redhead G of Fagus coming up in this FinCast. One of our employees, Taylor, to come in and talk to her about setting up an aquarium, whether it's the one you're setting up now or one you're dealing with problems, she's going to send you out with uh, the Chemipure. Absolutely. It, uh, it really helps just take all the contaminants out. Uh, it's not one of those products where you have to do all the measuring and testing. You basically put it in, it takes care of your problem. Hi everybody, John here with another FinCast. Today I've got my good dog Pippa. She was a rescue dog and she's been helping me out for a long time as we work on FinCast. She's always lying right at my feet. So she's here with me today and we're going to talk about a fish that's becoming more and more common in the hobby. It's a type of geophagus. Geophagus are also called earth eaters. And this one's the redhead geophagus. Now if you look, I've got three geophagus in my tank. You might be able to see one of them hanging out right over there and I'll give you some close-up shots here in just a moment. Moment. The redhead looks a little bit different than mine. Mine are tweens. They're far from adult sizes and coloration, but they're beginning to color up, and they're much less drab than the plain silver fish that they were when I first purchased them. I'll do more on my geos in another FinCast, but as I said, I want to talk about this stubby little geophagus that I first saw at the 2014 Global Pet Expo in Orlando. Seagrist Farms, which is probably the leading supplier of fish to the aquarium hobby in the United States, had these redheads on display. And they caught my eye because of that stubby body shape. So I interviewed Mike Tushinardi, who at the time was Seagrist's marketing director. Uh, those are the redhead tapajos, or redhead tapajos is actually how you pronounce it. But that's a beautiful South American uh, geophagus geophagus that's uh, starting to make its way into the trade a lot more commonly than it was. Uh, beautiful like flag coloration on the tail which really stands out and uh, as they get older they develop a very pronounced red head. All right, so I'm editing this fin cast, but the more I looked at that fish and compared it online to some pictures I googled of the adult redheads, the more I realized that I'm not sure if I'm talking about the right fish. It had been about a year since I took that footage, so I sent a picture to Mike and I asked him, are you sure this is the right fish? And he confirmed, yes, it's a redhead, but he reminded me that it's actually a naturally occurring short-bodied genetic variation. He told me, in fact, it's very popular in Europe. Whether you choose the short-bodied version or the regular redhead, they will develop beautiful long streamers from their ventral fins and they will become stunning fish. They come from the Amazon River Basin in Brazil, and they'll grow to be about six inches long. Okay, now back to your regularly scheduled FinCast. Sorry, I just couldn't resist. Mike told me they're actually related to the species in my tank, but the redheads will be prettier. But uh, they're in the Surinamensis complex, pretty similar to a Geo Surinamensis, just a lot more colorful, kind of bulkier, uh, heavier builds. And like most geophagus, it's a great community fish because they're placid, uh, they don't bother most other fish, and uh, their color is just stunning. Like most geophagus, they constantly search through the substrate for food, so plants are very likely to be uprooted. Try to stack rocks or driftwood over your plants if you can that'll hopefully keep the fish from digging them out. Now geos are much more peaceful than other cichlids and you can easily keep them with medium-sized tetras without too much fear that they'll be eaten. But they don't do so well with the more aggressive Central and South American cichlids, so be careful. Pretty much all geophagus prefer a sandy substrate and typical soft water, lower pH Amazon water conditions. Though relatively rare until recent years, these redheads are now being bred in Florida, so they're becoming more and more common in your local fish stores. So thanks to Mike for the interview. You'll see him in a lot of my FinCasts. By the way, he just finished a world tour. He's been out in Asia and some of these third world countries where a lot of tropical fish come from, and, and he has been out in the sticks whether he's been in a dugout canoe or headed out to an outdoor fish market where tropical fish are sold right next door to fruits and vegetables and other things in, the, in these outdoor markets. Uh, he's really seen it all and he's done a lot of great blogging and I'll put some links to some of Mike's blogs in the description down below. If you haven't already, please subscribe to FinCasters. I really appreciate the subscriptions. We've had a lot lately. Remember, there's a new FinCast every Sunday now so you can plan on that and hopefully that makes things a lot easier for you and makes me a little bit more predictable. I've been, I've been working very hard on that. 
Remember, I do fincasts on all kinds of different topics related to the aquarium hobby, whether it's planted tanks, marine aquariums, including reefing, or whether it's cichlids, including especially African cichlids. It's all right here at Fincaster, so please click around and take a look at some of my other videos. There's plenty to choose from. Having said all that, I'll see you in the next fincast.